Hey everybody, it's Mike Young, lifestyle nutritionist with aplantbaseddiet.org. Welcome to chapter 116 of my book, Live to 150. So we're getting close to the end and I thank you for hanging in there. And if you're still hanging in there, you are really interested in this. So as you know, from, this, from the beginning of this book, we have all kinds of hints and habits that will help us all to double our lifespan. And the more of them you do, the better. Now, this one's a big one. I talked about it before in chapter 42, where we talked about the food. And I've got my notes here because I'm gonna need these to help you guys out, make sure I don't forget anything. But this is about organic and chemical free. Now, it's not just about organic and chemical free with uh, the food only. You know, we had a couple chapters that dealt with other things such as deodorant and antiperspirant. <laughs> and I'd say there's a chapter we had on chemical warfare on women. If you didn't watch that one, go back and watch that one, it's important. But the general idea is that chemicals are a problem. Now, why are they a problem? They're a problem because they really were never designed for the human body. If you follow along with the precepts of my book here and the concepts, well, I am aware that the body is designed to heal itself. Sickness and illness is kind of like a check engine light. It's kind of like a, a symptom that something's really wrong. And in almost all cases, the body is trying to get your attention and it will continue to, to show these ridiculous symptoms that you don't like until you do something about it. And hopefully you don't choose to kind of gloss over it with pharmaceuticals. You actually go ahead and deal with the root cause of what's going on. So how does organic and chemical free play into this? Well, basically I'd say a good uh, axiom here for your life is that with anything that you're involved in, you wanna do it fully organically and or chemical free. Now organic doesn't necessarily mean chemical free, but organic means some things that chemical free doesn't. For instance, like when you are growing plants in the soil and you're talking about organic produce, of course, in most cases, they're not gonna use chemicals, although some specific types of chemicals are allowed under organic, but they're also gonna not use chemical fertilizers. They're gonna actually have real soil that's required to grow the plants. Because with a lot of the agricultural activities today, you don't need any kind of quality of uh, soil at all. And you can just grow anything because these chemicals are so powerful, they'll kind of spurt the growth in those plants. And it just kind of screws us up as humans in certain ways, all, all kinds of unintended consequences, basically. So, all right, what is the difference between eating chemical and eating or, or organic? Or, eating chemical, eating chemical free or eating organic? Well, I'd say, like I said, some chemicals are allowed in organic. So what we wanna do is we wanna have you grow in real soil without chemicals. Ideally, it's totally, totally chemical free. Now in a lot of, uh, if you've ever grown plants, you know there's a lot of different facets to go along with this. We also want you to grow them outdoors. I've talked about this in previous chapters. We want you to use the real sun that's out there. It's up there. And it's not indoors. I'm indoors right now. Actually, there's no real sun. I've got artificial lights lighting me up here. That's just because uh, the, the lighting is not uh, ideal outside for recording video. And also the sound quality is a lot worse as well. So we do this indoors. But for plants, you want to do outdoors. Indoors is an okay compromise. If you can't get good quality produce locally where you are, you know, indoor vertical farms are becoming very popular these days and they definitely have a purpose. But I'd say that the, the big thing is you want to make sure that they're grown without chemicals and in real soil because chemically grown plants are going to have a much lower nutrient density than organic plants. Uh, you know, basically we can't say for sure exactly how it's going to work, but you're going to get less. We want you to do the best you possibly can. That's why I'm going to have a, a chapter coming up here on growing your own food, but we'll get into that more in the future chapter. So what about, um, you know, basically what's wrong with chemicals? What about GMOs? Uh, and what about things besides food? Well, chemicals in general are mostly cancer causers. They're mostly carcinogens. They're really set up as labor-saving devices for people, and they do save a tremendous amount of human power that's, that doesn't need to be invested in different things. But the question is, are they necessary, and do the positives outweigh the negatives? My view is that with the chemicals, you want to eliminate the chemicals down to zero if possible, because as long as we're gonna be mindful and we're gonna, we're gonna work on the habits that you need to work on in order to have a long lifespan and, and, a, and a fun, you know, exuberant life, not boring and not full of pain, 
that we want to minimize those as, as much as possible because those are the cause of a lot of those issues or actually from the chemicals themselves. And so it just so happens that putting that little bit of extra work into doing something so you can do the chemical freeway is actually going to help your body. Your body's designed to work as we talked about in this, in this book. So um, for other things, you know, we'll talk about this in a second, but, but GMOs, what about GMOs? Well, if something's organic, it's automatically GMO. Um, genetically modified organism is the term, and it's kind of a middle ground between, con it's funny, they call it conventional now. Conventional is stuff grown with chemicals that can use GMOs. Non-GMO can be grown with chemicals, just not certain ones that, that only work on the GMO uh, plants. And then organic doesn't even allow GMOs. So when you go organic, you're not getting GMOs. So I just want to throw that in there. You don't have to worry about it because you're not going to get those if you're eating organically grown plants. And like I said, we're going to have a chapter come up here. We're going to talk about growing food yourself. So you're going to have to stay tuned for that. Now, the other thing is, like I said, the, uh, the, the underarm deodorants, antiperspirants for women, it's like hair color, makeup, birth control pills, all kinds of other things that are women, usually women specific or women only. Like I don't wear any makeup. I don't have any eyeliner on or, or any of that stuff. So I've never had to be concerned about it. That's why I call it, it's just mainly for a, a woman thing or at least somebody who identifies as a female is gonna wear that kind of stuff. And most guys won't, although some guys will. So let's not say that they won't. But anything like that, anything that involves your water, we got a chapter on water. Because if it's tap water, there's chemicals in the water. You want chemical free, go watch that chapter that we had on water. Other things like deodorants, uh, sorry, I said deodorants. Huh? Laundry detergents, dishwashing detergents, uh, what else? Even fabric softeners, cleaning products, stuff you spray in the air, which you shouldn't do, um, all kinds of things. There are so many different things, paints, you know, all these things are off gassing. Actually, most of the things that you own probably are off gassing. It's better chemically in general, if you ever thought about this, to buy pre owned stuff because the off gassing is, I'd say, exponentially lower in pre-owned products than in something that was manufactured recently. And I can attest to that because I remember one time, you know, that the most expensive car in the world, the most expensive smell in the world is a new car smell, right? I bought a, my truck, which I have now, I still have it from 2015. I bought it brand new and I bought it in Florida. It was hot. So I, I got it from the dealer, brand new, started driving down the road. It was hot, I had the windows up, had the air conditioning on. And after that ride, I remember from Fort Myers up to Tampa area, I was feeling sick. I, my eyes were burning and it was all because of the off gas. So there's so many things. These are things that you need to kind of be mindful of. And I want you to please comment below so you can let people know things that, you know, maybe hacks or, or just things that people don't think about that, that contain chemicals, whether you see them or touch them or not. You know, we have a chapter on radon gas here in the book earlier, and that's a chemical as well. So you got to not forget about that too. There's all kinds of discussions we can have here in the comments. So please go down in the comments, discuss it. Of course, like this chapter if you've gotten some value out of it and subscribe so you get notifications of the next 20 or so chapters that I've got left in the book. And I have a few, um, a few things at the end there after chapter 150. So stay tuned for that as well. Anyway, thanks so much for watching and we'll see you in the next chapter. Bye-bye.